Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post now tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, I am doing another Watch Me Work video on my lovely client. She came in a few weeks ago and so we're just going to be doing a fill and a new design on her nails. I am using my Kiara Sky Rechargeable e-file for this step along with their 5-in-1 carbide bit. This one is in medium grit. I love it. It's my favorite. I do have my e-file at a speed of about 9 to 10,000 RPMs during this process. I feel like it's my comfortable speed to remove a design or gel polish or anything like that. So this design I actually did not record it. But I did post it on my Instagram, so if you guys are following me there, you guys probably saw it. It was a very simple pastel kind of colored set. We did kind of an abstract set. She actually brought in a picture for that set. So I did go ahead and tag the nail tech that I recreated the work from. But I'm just going ahead and gently removing that design and the top coat. I am going vertically up and down, making sure that I'm getting a nice even stroke so that I don't over file the nail. I just want to remove that design. Very, very gentle on the pressure. I'm not overly pressing down on the nail. Again, because I only want to remove the design and not any acrylic. It is very important that you guys watch your guys' pressure when doing this step because you definitely can mess it up and then you'll have to add a little bit more acrylic which isn't really a big problem but at the end of the day you do want to save as much time as possible now during this process as well while i am filing off the design i want to make sure that i'm looking around the cuticle area to make sure that there isn't tons of lifting if there would be tons of lifting i would focus on that area as well once i'm done removing the design and kind of try to thin that out so that when I go in with my sanding band, the filing is very minimal on that area. In order to remove lifting very well, you want to thin it out nicely and that will help it come right off. You won't struggle too much with the sanding band if you do it during this process. So normally I wait to hand file at the end, but for whatever reason, my pregnant brain told me to do it at this point. <laughs> so I'm taking my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file and just filing the sides. And I'm just trying to get that shape nice and perfect. Again, normally when I'm doing a fill, I wait towards the end, but my whole process doing nails has been all over the place because my brain is telling me to do otherwise. <laughs> so bear with me throughout this process. Once I'm done with that, I am going in and we're going to be prepping the natural nail. First, I did ask my client if she wants me to trim down her nails. So it is very important that you get this done right at this point. You don't want them to have you do an entire set or, you know, whatever the case is, and then them tell you to file some of it off. So normally when I'm doing the fill, I go ahead and ask, do you want to change the shape? Do you want me to trim them down any? And the only thing she said was her thumbs. If you guys have been following me for a while, you guys will note that I personally like my thumbs a lot shorter than the rest of my nails. It just helps me kind of do productive stuff throughout the day, specifically unbuckling my son's car seat. That was the main reason why I got them shorter. And for her as well, she prefers to have her thumbs shorter. So I went ahead and asked her what length she showed me and I went ahead and used my e-file for that. You want to be very, very careful while you're doing that process because it can get a little bit tricky. So I like to hold my e-file vertically up and down as you can see and I'm kind of going in on the side and then I use the very tip of it and file through that acrylic in a straight line so that it gives me a guide on where I want to break it off or trim it off. And once you get through that acrylic layer, you'll start seeing the tip come through as you can see here. It's a little bit wider in that area. And then I'm gonna go in again vertically up and down. And then again with the tip of my e-file. This is just my personal preference. I'm terrified of the e-file skipping. So I have found that if I do a combination of these two movements, it is good to go. 
And for this step, I kept my e-file at the same speed of about 10,000 RPMs, kind of around that area. Now I'm just trying to shave it as straight as possible. Just wanna make sure that everything goes smoothly. Now we are moving on to the natural nail prep part. For this step, I am moving my e-file down to 4,000 RPMs. I have now switched to my mandrel bit and I am using the Profiles Backstage Mandrel Bit with their purple sanding bands. This one is medium grit. What I like about these sanding bands is that they are very, very fine. So even if you choose the coarse grit ones, they're still going to be super safe on the natural nail. As long as you keep your speed at a lower speed, you should be good to go. So again, 4,000 RPMs on the e-file and I'm just going very, very gently across the natural nail. I just want to remove the shine. I'm not removing tons of layers. And at this point, if I do have any lifting on the nails, I will go ahead and remove that carefully as well. When you are removing lifting, you wanna make sure you stay on the acrylic and not the natural nail because that is what causes rings of fire. If you guys are familiar with that, it's those little ridges that you get over time when you over file on a specific area. Once we're done with the mandrel bit and removing the shine, I am going in with my needle bit. I still have my e-file at a speed of 4,000 RPMs and I'm just going to gently go around that cuticle area. This is going to help remove any dead skin cells left behind from the mandrel bit. Even though you feel like you are filing it very well, there's still some left behind. So I love this bit. It's very, very gentle. Very, very nice and effective tool. Definitely has changed my prep game ever since I started using it. And I feel like I'm going to continue to use it. So definitely recommend this one as a must for the prep part of doing nails. Now we are switching to our cuticle ball bit. This is going to help remove that cuticle without having to nip anything off. Once you get the first good 
cuticle cleanup. You don't have to worry about it overgrowing. This helps gently buff it off every single time they come in. I absolutely love it. I find it a lot safer than actually trimming around that cuticle. So if you are deadly scared of a cuticle nipper just like I am, Highly recommend this one. My e-file now has moved up to a speed of 5,000 RPMs. I have found this a little bit more effective, especially on the more stubborn areas. But as you can see, it just gently removes it, gently buffs it off. Try it on yourself and you will definitely see how gentle it is on the skin as long as, again, you're not applying too much pressure and you leave that speed at a lower speed, you should be good to go. Of course, always ask your client because everybody has different sensitivities when it comes to likes and dislikes. So make sure you are asking them throughout the process if everything is good. Once I'm done with all the filing, I am going in with a lint-free wipe and some swipe. I am going in and really cleaning that natural nail area while wiping off any dust from the rest of the nail as well. This is going to help dehydrate the natural nail, which helps with the product adhesion. If you guys don't do this, definitely recommend you guys implement this in your prep part and it will definitely help a ton i have found that it has helped with any lifting issues as well making sure that i'm thoroughly cleaning out that area and then i'm going in right after with my primer this one is from not polish it is the triple x bond from their site absolutely love it it has helped a ton as well i like to do two coats specifically with clients that have lifting issues if your client is fine with one coat of course stick to that but if they're still having issues try two coats and that should do the trick right after our primer we are going in with our acrylic application for today's video i am using the not polish acrylic brush in the size 12 Along with that, I'm using their monomer as well. This really pretty nude I have become obsessed with. It's really good for darker skin tones. This goes very, very well with my skin as well as my client's skin. So it's definitely the nude we gravitate towards every time she wants nude nails. This one is First Nude from Not Polish. Love it. It's very, very neutral and super, super cute. I'm just going in with a medium-sized bead of acrylic and I am going right where the lifting is at and gently pushing up while holding my finger in a downward position and I'm doing any little cleanup that I might need. I try to be very, very gentle and careful with my cuticle bead specifically because you don't want to have to clean up any mess. If it does leak over, you might think you clean it off very well. However, there can still be acrylic left behind, which will cause lifting in the long run. And you want to try to avoid that at all costs. So I'm trying to be very, very careful. Holding the finger in a downward position is definitely going to help tremendously. The amount of liquid you have in your brush as well is definitely very important. I have a very in-depth video on liquid to powder ratio. So if you guys are struggling with your cuticle application, you wanna make sure you are focusing on your liquid to powder ratio. That's going to be a game changer. So focus on that and then once you get that done, you'll be able to do your cuticle application flawlessly. I try to use a medium sized bead throughout the entire process. Now, of course, if it is the thumb and it's slightly bigger, I will move up to a large bead, but this helps just blend everything right in completely flawlessly when you already have acrylic existing on the nail. So again, gently push it up, holding the finger in a downward position and then very, very light pressure. I'm just blending that product in. And you can see very little effort needed on my part. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails and kind of just let you guys watch so you guys can learn from that. I'm 
Broken plans, so we can start again. Wanting down a second chance, I'm too selfish for that. I let you fall again, now that you know that. Now once we're done with our acrylic application and everything is nice and dry, I am going in with my e-file once again, along with my 5-in-1 bit from Kiara Sky. My e-file is at about 9,000 RPMs for this process. I go gently around the cuticle area and then vertically up and down the nail, making sure that everything is nice and smooth, not applying too much pressure. Again, I just want to smooth everything out. Very, very minimal effort on my part. I am not trying to remove bulk product. I really feel like you guys should focus also on keeping the cuticle area nice and flush to the natural nail. This is also going to help minimize your lifting. If it is nice and flush, that is going to prevent it. If you have it very thick, it can cause snagging, which ultimately leads to lifting. So just a quick little pointer as well. I'm gonna go ahead and finish filing and then we will go into our shaping. Going back in with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file, I am going to be filing the sides of the nails first. And I like to alternate from left to right, right to left, just to make sure that I do not over file one side or the other. Sometimes the client's nails will grow a certain way and you wanna make sure you are focusing on that as well. As the nails grow longer, they tend to adapt to the natural nail shape. So you wanna make sure you fix that at this point. I'm gonna go ahead and finish filing the sides and then we're going to be flipping the hand around to look at the nails from the client's perspective and file the tip from that area.
Once I'm done with that, we are going to prep the surface of the nail for our nail art. I'm using my Profiles Backstage Sponge Buffer. These are my absolute favorite. They make the nail super, super smooth, ridge-free, which is exactly the surface that you want to do some nail art, especially some intricate nail art. You want it to be super smooth on the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that on the rest of the nails, and then we'll move on to our nail art. Once we're all done filing, you can either have your client thoroughly wash their hands or do my version, which is use a lint-free wipe and some swipe. I feel like this process is just quicker. A lot of the time they'll get up and it just takes too long, so I prefer to have them in my chair unless they need to use the restroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and thoroughly clean the surface of the nail and prep for our nail art. For today's nail art, it's going to be a very easy to achieve design. So we're gonna be starting off with the Profiles Backstage Frosting Gel Paint in the color white. For this step, I am using my favorite nail art brush from Amazon. You can find that in my Amazon storefront. But I'm basically going to be doing like a deep French as my base. So I'm starting off with one side and then doing the other side and gently connecting it. Then we're going to be filling in the rest of the area with my 3D nail art brush. You can use any thicker brush. I just prefer a thicker one so that I can cover more surface versus that liner detail brush. Now for this nail art part, I am actually using a combination of a neon yellow, neon orange, neon pink, and a purple gel polish. I will leave them all linked down below. A lot of the bottles did not have names on them, but I will link them if I find them on the website. Some are from Poochie's Nails and some are from Profiles Backstage. One of them is from Not Polish, so bear with me, but I will link them down below. If I find the name, I'll also put them into the video. But I'm basically just taking a larger brush, grabbing all of the colors, placing them onto the nail while the white is still wet. And then you kind of just move them around to your liking. So again, we're gonna repeat that on the rest of the nails, starting off with our white base. And then we're gonna be grabbing all of the colors and splotting them on there, rubbing them around, making sure that 
it's messy but cute still so it's like a marbleized kind of airbrush look without having to use acrylic or without having to use the airbrush gel polish so we're gonna be using our white to our advantage because it's still wet. It's gonna help those colors move around very nicely, effortlessly, and it looks so cute. I feel like this is such a pretty summer design. It's nothing crazy, super simple, yet super vibrant and bright. Remember, you do not wanna cure this white. You wanna make sure that it is still wet. We're grabbing all of those colors and just randomly placing it on there. I have now switched to an ombre brush. This one is from profiles backstage i feel like this was a little bit of an easier route just because it's a little bit thinner but also still thick if that makes sense so i'm just grabbing the colors placing them on there she did want me to use more minimal purple so i'm honestly just dabbing it on there as you can see very very small portions of purple because that was what she preferred
Now don't forget, you want to cure this in the light for at least one minute. I like to do two minutes just to be safe. Once we're fully out of the light, I am going in with my top coat. Make sure that everything is fully dry before you top coat. This is very important. You don't want anything smudging, especially that beautiful French design. So I am taking Glosset from Not Polish. She preferred shiny, which is rare for my channel, but we both did agree that this specific design would look better with shiny or glossy top coat. So I'm using a thin layer of that, making sure that I'm really pressing it into the nail art. You wanna get into all the little creases or anything like that caused by the design so that it fully covers it, fully protects it. You wanna make sure that her nails stay super pretty and vibrant throughout the entire time she has them on. Again, we're gonna be carrying these in the light for a minute. I like to do two minutes to be safe and make sure that everything is fully, fully cured. I have this fear that their nails are gonna smudge. I don't know what it is, but I'd rather prevent it by leaving it in there a little bit longer. Once we're out of the light, I am going in with my cuticle oil from Profiles Backstage. It's my absolute favorite. I talk about it all the time. It does not leave a greasy look on the fingers, which I absolutely love. I put a generous amount and then I go ahead and rub it in with my fingers just so that it blends nicely into the rest of her fingers and none of the areas look dry. And then I also kind of run my fingers down the tip of the nail to make sure that I don't need to fix anything. If I do, I would go ahead and do it at this point. Repeating that on the other hand, rubbing it in very, very nicely. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. It is so meaningful to me that you guys support me as much as you guys do. I deeply appreciate you guys, but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys later. Bye.